So today, I'm going to attempt to repair a fault which the engine light has come on several times for. It seems to come on after about 20-30 minutes of highway driving, then goes off. Um, and then it's come on a week later again. Um, so I've got a scanning tool to scan for faults. And um, this is the fault that comes up when I scan it. So this is a nice cheap little scanner. I think you can get these for 20 or $30 on eBay online. Um, read the code. And this is the code that's coming up. Even though at the moment that light does not come on when I turn the car on, I've only got the ignition on in the on position without the motor on. So if I turn the motor on, that light will disappear. Ooh, that sounds a bit rough. But yeah, I've still got the fault coming up occasionally. So I'm going to attempt to fix that. And I think it's the VVT solenoid. I'll show you all about that. So this is a 2015 Holden Captiva 7, a 2.4 litre petrol. Now, um, this fault, if it is this uh, solenoid valve or solenoid actuator, then hopefully it's a simple fix. So what we've got to do is get this part off the top of the motor. This is the air intake that goes into the engine. So we've got to take this off, this cover off, and this cover off to get to the engine, top of the engine. And uh, all you've got to do is take this hose clamp off, one screw, loosen that, so you can just pop that off. Down under here, there's another clamp with a screw, hose clamp. I don't know whether you can see it that well with that. It's a slightly better position, so just loosen that one. And then this part will just slide up and then the other part which is easy is this part just be careful you just want to pop that out a little bit of force I think it's easy with a screwdriver let me do that now okay I've got a screwdriver I'm just gonna pop this out gently Might be easier with two hands I don't want to break that Yeah, so I just managed to pop this out by putting my screwdriver here, levering it against the uh, this part here, and then I used my left hand to try not to keep this straight at the same time so it didn't bend, and it's just popped straight out. All right, so now I'm just gonna undo this and the other one that I showed you, and then I'll tell you how to get it off. Okay, I've just loosened this, as you can see. Get it. It's hard with two hands free, it just comes away. And then what there is is there's two clips, one on the bottom of here and here. They'll just pry up. So if I pull this up, one off, I don't know whether you heard that. Another one off, done. And then this should just lift out. Bit of a wiggle. Again, harder with one hand. It's coming though, I can feel it. And there we have it. So just to give you a look on the other side, there's the two parts that were just clipped into those bolts. They just clip into there. And the bottom that came off the intake there. Okay, now the next part. So this part's even easier. All you have to undo is take the cap off the oil. Um, and then we just pop, I think it's got four bolt clips like the last one. So really easy. Start at the back. There you go, that side's come away. Again, it'd be easier with two hands, but trying to do a demo at the same time and just lift it away gently and that's the bottom of this one so again the uh, 
four clamps. Oh no, sorry, three. One, two, three. And that just comes off easy. So now here we're at the top of the engine. The sensor I'm looking at is the infeed. So with all the research, um, this solenoid here is the one we're going to change, which is the intake. There's also an exhaust one. They are actually both different part numbers. So my fault, P10, seems to be the intake one. So that's the one I'm going to change. So the next, next thing I think is important, I forgot to tell you before, pop the uh, oil cap back on because you don't want any junk and garbage going in there into your engine. And also a good idea to pop a rag over the air intake because again, you don't want garbage going into your uh, engine. So I'm just going to pop a rag over that now. Okay, so now I've covered my air intake. Nothing can get in there. I pop my cap back on. Nothing can get inside the engine now. Now, if you have a look, all that's holding this solenoid is a one 10 mil bolt, apparently. So the other thing is you probably can't see on this camera, but there's a lot of dirt and dust and garbage in there. You can see a little bit there. I'm going to get my um, air gun and blow all this out because when we take that solenoid out, I don't want anything dropping inside the engine compartment again. So it's good to give that whole area clean before you try and remove any parts. Okay, I'm just going to blow it out with air now. Okay, now I've blown it out with some compressed air. Still a little bit of tiny bit of dirt in there, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. So now I'm going to get a 10 mil bolt, uh, sorry, 10 mil socket, and undo that bolt and see how we go. Actually, first things first, I'm actually going to uh, unplug it first. So it's pretty easy, you can see it's just a clip. Just put your finger on the edge there, should just pry out pretty easy. A little bit of a wriggle. Always again easier. There you go. And they are actually, both of these on my model, um, they do have a slightly different plug, so you shouldn't be able to get them wrong. Only thing is, if you're changing both, don't forget to uh, take note as to which one goes where because you could put the wrong one, say the intake into the exhaust, and then put obviously the wrong plug on because, yeah, the solenoid's in the wrong position. But anyway, take note. And yeah, I can't get this wrong because I'm just taking the one out. So hopefully pretty simple. I'm going to try this with one hand. Look at that. My left hand wasn't even that hard. So I'm just going to take that bolt all the way out now. Okay, so I've now loosened the bolt off completely. It actually uh, retains in the bracket. So as long as you make sure you've got it all the way out, I'm going to try and uh, lever this out gently, hopefully without destroying the old one. So I've just got a pair of needle nose pliers. Hopefully just going to pry this out slightly. Let's see how it goes. Oh, look at that. Easy as. And there might be a little bit of oil come out of here, so just be aware, have some rags ready. And that, my friends, is our VVT solenoid intake side. So I'm going to uh, put the new one in. It's pretty much just the reverse of what we just did. Um, yeah, mine was about 130 bucks from Repco. Uh, Fuel Miser brand. Hopefully it goes alright. Okay, so this is my brand new one. All you should have to do is literally just gently place it in inside the hole. So again, making sure you don't drop anything else down there. I'm just going to fit that there with me because I'm not looking at the camera. Just make sure actually there's no other caps or anything. Looks okay. And of course the same plug. Let's put it in place. Just going nice and easy. Pretty much drops in place. Look at that. I don't know if you saw that, but that's just pretty well rested right in place beautifully. So now I should be able to just tighten the socket. So I'm not going to record all this, just a little bit. So that screw's pretty well going straight in the old thread. No dramas. I'm just going to tighten that up and um, plug it in. Okay, I've tightened up the bolt. That's down. Easily just to 
put the socket back in. Again, you can't get it wrong if you're only changing one. Clip straight back in there. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera there. Make sure it doesn't flip out. It's clipped in nicely. Alright, so now I'm just going to put the uh, engine cover back on. Then the air intake back on. And hopefully we've cleared our fault. Literally, it's as simple as that. Hopefully. So again, just a quick reminder. Don't forget to take the fuel cap off before you put the cover on because you won't get the cover on. And I'm going to do that now. Also, just a quick reminder, so I've removed the cap. All the cover is clipping on is this, this, and this. So place it on about right. You'll use this as your gauge. Then make sure it clips in nicely. So I've already pushed this one in. I'm going to push this one on. Nice clip. Nice clip. Done. And then don't forget the fuel cap. Ah, oh, sorry, the oil cap. All important. Okay. Now, for the other one, it's easy. You line up your two holes that it clamps down. Then, obviously, your intake. And that one, don't forget to take your rag out. Oh, and then, of course, this pipe. Okay, so the easy way to do this is to line up this chute first. Wriggle that in, then line up this, can't get it wrong, and then uh, line up your back with those little clamp clips, and you should hear it pop in like so. One, two, and then of course don't forget this, this will just clip straight back in. Done. Now I'm going to tighten up this clamp, hose clamp, and don't forget the bottom one down here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's it there. And then we're going to turn the engine on and try and clear the fault and see how we go. Okay, I'm going to turn the engine on, see if I can clear this fault. So, what I might do first, I'll put it to on without the engine running. I will do my scan. Says zero codes found. Let's hope that stays that way, but it said that before as well. So read codes. No codes are stored in module. That's good. That's already better than what I had before because even with the engine off, I still had that code before. So let's see when we turn the engine on. Sounded a lot smoother. Sorry about the radio. Now, let's do a scan. Let's see what we can come up with. No codes. That's so far spectacular. When I was doing these repeated scans before, I would get the um, I would get the no codes are stored in the module. Maybe two times in a row and then it would come up with the P10 fault. So what I'm going to do is take it for a test drive, scan it again afterwards and hopefully that's it fixed. Hopefully this helps someone. Um, it's a relatively easy fix. You can do it yourself. Um, yeah, all the best. Thanks.